Hey groups, uh, welcome to another week of content. Excited for the conversations that we get to have today. Um, if you didn't get to, a chance to catch the message this week, um, Eric spoke on the story of Abraham. Um, and as we just went through this, it is it is just a beautiful story with so much rich uh, theology in it. Um, and what we talked about is this idea that Abraham, uh, to give you a little bit of a backstory, Abraham and Sarah had wanted children for a long time. God had promised that there would be a great nation that comes out of them. And you would think that they'd, they'd start doubting God because they were a hundred years old and they still had not had kids yet. And it was at that time that God came to them and said, no, I, I am going to give you a son. And we see Isaac come on the scene. Um, but years later, I believe Isaac was 13. God asked Abraham to make a sacrifice and to sacrifice Isaac, his one and only son. And we look at this story and think, why would God ever ask that? Um, but Abraham's response two times in the scripture section is, here I am. Here I am, God. Like, I am here. What, what do you want? Like, what would you like from me? It's, it's that response that you'd get from a parent to a child. The child saying, here I am. I'm here. And I'm fully known and I want to be seen by you. And what I love about this story is Abraham trusts God fully. Not only does he trust God fully, but he knows that God has promised a great nation to come out of them. And he never doubts that, even if it isn't through Isaac, right? Abraham trusts in God fully. And it is such a beautiful story. If you haven't gotten a chance to listen to that message, make sure to do that this week. But we're going to look at the story of Abraham in our group's questions and think about what what that means, and sometimes how our possessions and the things we value most, we can actually put those things above God. Um, and I'm excited to uh, hear how your conversations go this week. But if you have kids in the room, kids, uh, you can uh, look to the leaders or your parents. They have got some kids' questions for you on the sheet, and you can walk through that. And then adults, we will start running through uh, the rest of the content. All right, question number one, adults. And this goes back to the challenge from last week when we talked about Job um, and trusting God's sovereignty. Uh, here's a question in this. How'd the challenge go from last week about letting go of the things we can't control and trusting in God's sovereignty? Um, what was challenging about, about this this past week? Question number two, um, in Eric's message, he talked about um, his possession of a truck. He loves the truck and I am right there with him. I love everything about trucks. I've got uh, F-150 and I love it. I, I get it washed all the time. It is one of my favorite possessions. What is your favorite possession and why is that your favorite thing? All right, I want you to start by reading Genesis 22, 1 through 3, and then we'll come back here for the question. So as you're reading through those verses, remember that Abraham and Sarah had longed for a child for decades. They were hoping for a child and um, at a point, it seemed like it was never going to happen. Uh, Sarah was past uh, being able to conceive of a child, um, and God finally blessed them with one. Um, we see in these verses that God asks Abraham for the very thing that he probably loved most in the whole wide world. Um, how does Abraham respond? Right? How does he respond to the situation of what God asks? And what do you notice about when Abraham leaves to go do that? All 
All right, for question number four, I want you to think back to your favorite possession and think if God were to ask you for that, if God were to ask you to use that in some different way or potentially even get rid of it, how would you respond in that situation? Would you question him? Or maybe what fears do you have about trusting God with what you love most? Um, as we take that one step further, I even want to ask the question of, have we, have we misaligned our trust? Or to think sometimes we allow ourselves um, to place so much trust in an item or something that God has given us or something that God has blessed us with. And all of a sudden we trust that thing and not the one who has given it to us. So think about that. Do we hold on to and worship the provision or the provider? Uh, talk about what that means in your group. I want us to think about uh, the story of Abraham when um, God asked Isaac to, or when God asked Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. What we see here is Abraham continues to trust God, regardless of what God asks him. Um, we see that Abraham trusts the provider, not the provision. And what I'm wondering in this is sometimes we start to pursue the things of God. Okay, the things of God versus God himself. What would life look like um, if, if God was our dearest treasure and not the gifts that he's given us are our dearest treasure? What if God was that very thing? What would our lives look like? I want you to next look into James 1, 13 through 15 and ask the questions here. Does God tempt us? Does God tempt us? If James tells us that God doesn't tempt us, then what do we see happening in this story of Abraham? And maybe even the question, why would God test us? Why do we see that playing out here? Okay, question number seven. When has there been a time in your life where God tested, remember it's not tempted, right, where God tested your faith? What was different about you after that time of testing? All right, for the challenge this week, I want you to think of Back to question number five, um, when we t talked about this idea of putting more trust into provisions than the provider, right? Is there something in your life that you're placing too much trust in? An item, maybe it's, maybe it's wealth even, or financial stability, or your job, things that God has blessed us with or God has provided for us that we put our security and our trust in those things. During this next week, I want you to think about that. What does that mean? And how do we shift that trust from being in something like that um, to the actual provider of those things? How do we trust God in those things? If you guys have time, um, one thing we did not get a chance to touch on at all in the story of Abraham that I think is just mind blowing, um, the, the theology in it that we didn't get a touch on it, um, is this story out of Genesis, I believe it's um, 15. Let me make sure. Yes, Genesis 15. And I'm gonna give you a little bit of a teaser in this. So if you're like, nope, we're done, Matt. We don't wanna go into any more questions. You may turn it off, but you may wanna listen to this because it's really good. Genesis 15, there's a moment where God and Abraham are making a covenant together. Okay, and in that day and age, um, kings, 
when they were making a treaty of sorts, they would cut apart in half like cows and goats and doves and they would place them in on the side of like a mound and the, this is kind of graphic, but the blood would would pour into the center. And these kings would walk through this blood to make a covenant and a treaty with each other saying that if one of us breaks this, may our bodies be like that of what is what we are walking in between, right? May we be split apart and blood rush from us. Um, it's a super powerful image. It's a graphic image, but it's a powerful image saying, hey, if I don't if, if I don't do what I say I'm going to do, let this happen to me. Um, and what we find in Genesis 15 is that this, this is happening. And God allows Abraham to fall asleep. And what we see is God, God passes through this where Abraham doesn't, right? And Abraham is supposed to, but God does that for him. And there is just, oh, there's so much deep theology in this of what it foretells of what Jesus is going to do. That when God passes through it, he's actually saying, hey, if I break this and if Abraham breaks this, if your people break this, I will sacrifice myself. And if you know the Bible, if you know the New Testament, you know how that's going to play out. So, oh, there's just so much in here. If you've got time, um, we're going to look through that in our Digging Deeper sections. You can flip over the page and take a closer look at that. Um, but there, there, there's just so much in the Bible that we can't get into. But I'm hoping that you guys get the chance to do that today. There's so much good stuff in there. So if you don't have time, don't worry about it. Stay tuned. We'll get into it later, I'm sure. Um, but I hope you guys have a great week. I hope your conversations are rich um, and you're able to really talk about where God may be moving. Um, if you guys have questions, uh, as you dive into some of this stuff, we're in the process of making some podcasts that we look at some questions in Genesis. And as we continue through the Bible, if you've got questions, we'd love to hear them and we'd love to potentially answer those in some kind of podcast form. So if you got some of those, we'd love to have a conversation with you. Um, otherwise, have a great week and we will see you guys soon.